Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to give you guys a few examples of using the await keyword inside of Godot 4, including a example where we wait for a UI to confirm or cancel on an action that the player might be uh, trying to do. So as a very basic example, in uh, the root of the scene I just have a random node here, I'm calling it await root, and you can see in the script for it, on ready function, we have a wait, and you can create timers on the tree root by calling get tree, which is the root of uh, the currently running scene. So above this await root would be the true scene root, and then everything in here is attached to that. And then uh, create timer of three seconds, and we wait for the signal timeout to occur. So if you don't like chaining your functions together like that, another way you could do this would be to say var tree equals get tree, and then uh, var timer equals tree dot create timer 3.0, and then down here we can say timer dot timeout. So timeout here is the name of a signal. So if I right click on timeout and I look up the symbol, you can see that signal here emitted when the time reaches zero, as you would expect from a timer. So you can either await a signal or you can await a function call, which is more useful when that function also has some kind of await timer type situation where you wouldn't expect it to complete immediately. And then after this await is finished, basically the timer times out, then we print three seconds elapsed. So if I run the scene, then you'll see in the description down here or the output that after three seconds, three seconds elapsed occurs and it has to wait for that timer to time out. Okay, so that's probably the simplest way you could use a wait. Uh, let's add a UI element that we would be waiting on to complete its action and it's not timer based, it's user input based. So we'll await a function call uh, rather than a signal here. And in our 2D scene, let's add to our root node, a child node, we'll add a confirmation dialog. If you um, create the confirmation dialog and show it, then you'll see that the confirmation dialog has a title, a description area, I believe. Yeah, the dialog text, and then an OK button and a cancel button. So one of the things is we don't know whether the player is going to press OK or cancel. So we have to basically be ready for both situations. And you can access the button and the cancel button through the confirmation dialog script. Or we can create a custom function uh, where when we have a result, we return that to the calling await root here, and then we do something with it. So I'm going to attach a new script to the confirmation dialog, and we'll just call it, uh, let's say, let's say something like timer confirmation dialog, and then create, and I'll rename the node timer confirmation dialog, or I guess dialog spelled without the U here, so just dialog, D-I-A-L-O-G. So in our custom script, we want to create a function where we wait for the user to input whether they want the timer to start or not be created at all. So I'll say, let's say function, wait for, let's say wait for timer confirmation. And this won't take anything as a parameter, but we're going to return, let's say a Boolean, true or false, true for we want to go ahead and do the timer situation, or false is going to be for cancel. Okay, so we don't know how long it's gonna take for the user to actually choose OK or cancel. So we're just going to wait until one of those two buttons is pressed. So let's create up here an, a variable. I'll say variable finished, and we will set this to false by default. And this is basically gonna be whether a selection has been made or not. So whenever we wait for a new confirmation, we wanna make sure that's false. So I'll say finished equals false. And let's say while not finished, then uh, we're going to keep looping. And whenever we loop, we want to basically wait for the next frame and then check if it's finished again. So we'll do a wait and let's say get tree dot process frame. So this is a signal that the scene root, whenever a new frame processes for all your nodes, it's going to emit this signal. Now, um, it's kind of redundant to get the tree again on every frame. So let's store a reference to the scene tree or scene root rather, and we'll do scene root equals get tree. But we're only gonna do that one time. And then whenever we're looping down here, we just use that same reference. So we only get the tree once. Okay, we also need a result. So the 
user import result. It's going to be a var result. And I could say, I'll say this is uh, null by default. And we'll also make sure it's set to null uh, whenever we come in for a new confirmation so we don't accidentally return an old result. Um, so now basically we need to connect to the OK button and the cancel button. So if you wanted to, you could look at confirmation dialog and you can see uh, in the docs which are built into Godot. And if you need to search for those, you can just type in confirmation dialog like this and find that. You can see that there's a get cancel button, which you can grab the signals on that button from. And if we go to accept dialog, which is the parent class, then you would have get OK button. So it's very easy to actually get these buttons in code. OK, so uh, in order for all this to work, we need to get reference to those buttons. And I'm just going to do that on ready. So let's say var OK button. And as far as I know, this should be of button class and then var cancel button, which is, of course, going to be another button. So in our script to get access to those, we'll do a function underscore ready and OK button is going to be equal to get uh, not get cancel button, get OK button and then cancel button is going to be equal to get cancel button. We also want to connect to the signals on these buttons. So OK button dot pressed dot connect. And when you connect to a signal, you want to give it a function to call whenever that signal is emitted. The signal of the button gets emitted when the button is pressed. So whenever the button is pressed, we want it to do something inside of this script. So I'm going to make a function underscore for private. And I'll just call this uh, on OK pressed and we'll do cancel button dot pressed dot connect and underscore on cancel pressed. OK, now we're going to get a bunch of errors because these functions don't exist. So let's go down here and create new functions. So I'll just copy and paste the name here. So function underscore on OK pressed. And we're going to do something with that in a minute. I'll pass it for right now. And let's create another function on so function on cancel pressed and we can pass that just to get rid of the error um, so when ok is pressed we want to say that the result is true and we want to say finished is also true so we'll say result is true and finished is true and since finished is true now this await function will be able to complete so we'll add a little bit more code down there uh, to return the result. But before that, let's do on cancel press. We'll say the result is false and finished is equal to true. Okay, since in both cases it should be finished now, let's add in the return result. So as long as these two buttons are pressed, we should be able to return the result. Expected to be a, a Boolean. Okay for okay for a true result, which means okay, we want to start the timer and then on cancel pressed result equals false for do not start the timer. Okay, so we have this awaitable function. Uh, since it does not complete immediately, it completes when uh, finished is set to true, and then it will return the result. So we go back over to our other script now, and instead of awaiting uh, this timer, well, I guess we will still await the timer, but uh, before that, we want to get the confirmation. So let's add in an export at export var timer confirmation dialog. And this would be a, oh, what did I give it a class name? And I want to give this the class name timer confirmation dialog. But if I check the other script, you'll see I didn't give it a class name. So I can't reference it by the name of the class. Also, there's an extra F there in the name of it. So to give it a class name, just at the top, class name timer confirmation dialog. So we want to be specific here so that we can easily access um, the functions we wrote. So inside of our await root timer confirmation dialog, you see it pops up now um, since the class name keyword kind of registers it with Godot. Okay, and now we can assign a timer confirmation dialog. So it'll only work with this custom class. If I create a uh, new confirmation dialog, like so confirmation dialog, and I try to assign that, it's not going to be available. If I show all, you see it's grayed out because a confirmation dialog is not a timer confirmation dialog until I assign the script to it. So now on ready, I want to get this timer confirmation dialog to pop up. So we can say timer confirmation dialog dot pop up. Uh, and I 
think this defaults to the center of the screen or something like that, we'll give it a shot. And then we want to await timer confirmation dialog dot wait for timer confirmation. So uh, remember, this is a function within await. So we're waiting for this await function to complete. And then if that completes, then we'll take the result, uh, which gets returned here. So we actually want to assign that to a variable. Our result equals await time of confirmation dialog, wait for time of confirmation. And if result is true, you could just leave it as if result, because uh, that already implies that. But just to make it a little bit more clear, I'll say if result equals true. Okay, so clearing that up. Otherwise, we just ignore that and the ready function completes. You don't really need to do like else pass or anything. Um, you can just ignore it because if the result's not true, this code doesn't run. Okay, so let's try hitting uh, play. Actually, let's take the time of confirmation and hide that initially because a pop-up does not usually show initially. So we want to wait until we manually pop it up here. And let's run the scene. So we'll see if this all works. Okay, we have the please confirm. You can see, of course, that the timer hasn't started. It's been more than three seconds and there's nothing down here because we're waiting on this to complete. So I'll go ahead and click OK here and we'll see if it runs down there. Three seconds later, we have three seconds elapsed. Okay, cool. So let's test the cancel version. So if cancel happens, the result is false. So I'll click cancel and we shouldn't see anything after three seconds. And as you can see, that works exactly as intended. So from a debugger sense to kind of make sure that what's happening is happening correctly, uh, we could set a couple breakpoints here in the script by just clicking to the left of the line and we set these breakpoints. So whenever this line is reached, it's gonna trigger. So um, in this case, we would not reach uh, this line down here until we hit okay. And then this line would take three seconds after this line completes. So if we hit play, we'll be able to hit these breakpoints. So you see immediately the pop-up occurs. We start waiting on the wait for timer confirmation dialog. I hit uh, continue. And no matter how long we wait, it's not gonna continue down here and finish this code. So if you don't know about asynchronous functions, basically everything else in our scene, all the other nodes are still running their code. It just kind of comes back and checks on this, something like once a frame, uh, to see if this is complete or not. And if it's complete, if the await condition has been met, then we continue on with the code. Otherwise, it just keeps running the other code in the background. So it's not like it's gonna freeze up your game while you're waiting for things to occur. You're just awaiting with this particular chunk of code. And so we hit OK, and you see that this breakpoint is immediately hit, um, where we're going to wait three more seconds. I hit Continue here, and it should take three seconds for this line to be reached. And there we go. Three seconds later, we hit the Prince line. I hit Continue, and it gets put out to the console. So working exactly as we expect. So since we've demonstrated that this works, let's improve things a little bit. So uh, this while function where we wait on the process frame every second to check if finished um, is set to true yet and then returning the result does work, but it's kind of inefficient because we're literally uh, checking this property on every single frame when instead we could just wait for a signal, which would be much better. So we're not just looping through this code, we're just waiting. So we're basically, we want to have uh, the result return in one way or another when the OK button is pressed or canceled is pressed or the dialog gets closed. So if we check these signals, you can see on the canceled signal, this also handles when the dialog is closed by other means, not necessarily just when it's the cancel button being pressed. I don't, I don't think you need to implement for close requested in that way. So instead, what we can do is uh, create a new custom signal that handles both OK and cancel situations and then emits the result. So if we go up to the top here, and I create a signal and we could say something like uh, confirmation result and we'll pass in the result as a boolean so we're going to want to emit that on both of these situations so if we use our signal confirmation result and we do dot emit we can emit the result which we've already set up right here and then if we go down here we, we could do confirmation result dot emit the result, which you can see is set to true there. So now rather than waiting for finish to be true, um, we could just go down here and await confirmation result. And uh, we can actually return that. So let's see, return await confirmation result, 
or you could say var result equals await confirmation result and then return that down here but i think this line should work we'll test it out we'll go ahead and test it out so in our await root we're still having this situation so let's uh, set a breakpoint and hit play i'll hit ok and we get the result just like before but the difference is now we don't have that loop on every frame we can just hit play it's going to go down here once and nothing's going to happen until we actually hit OK or cancel. Okay, so we can see that that works the same for the OK. Um, let's set a breakpoint in here and uh, show that this is only going to hit once and I'll test cancel as well. So when we hit play, okay, we're waiting for the confirmation result signal, but if I continue, it doesn't keep hitting that breakpoint. It's just going to wait for the signal, I'll hit cancel, and we can see that the canceled result comes here. The result is set to false, so it's not gonna run the timer. So if we waited three seconds, we shouldn't see anything down there. So that's a bit more efficient. Now, um, honestly, the wait for timer confirmation, we could change that as well. So if we look at the signals for a timer confirmation dialog, we can see uh, about to pop up is a signal we could use. So when uh, we call pop up on the dialog, we could just use that moment to reset the result and reset finished. So in here, I'm going to um, undo a few times. And I'll make a note up here about this being an option, but inefficient, just for reference. Okay, there we go. And what we'll do is on ready, we'll uh, connect to the about to pop up signal. So about to pop up dot connect. And let's create a new function on about to pop up. We'll create this one down here below, underscore for private function. So on about to pop up, we basically just need this bit result is null, finished is false, uh, because when we're popping up the window, we haven't gotten a result yet, and we are setting the finished to false because we're also still waiting for OK to be pressed or cancel to be pressed. Okay, and now on the await root, we can... Okay, so to show that this will happen, basically as soon as we pop open the window, uh, let's... Let's set a breakpoint here. So we see pop-up occurs here before the wait for timer confirmation. So let's hit play. And we can see when I hit play, on about to pop-up occurs first, and then we get to wait for timer confirmation. So if we look at wait for timer confirmation, at this point we can actually just eliminate this um, because we can just await the confirmation result directly. So on await root, for getting the result, and I'll just comment that one out, I'd probably in the end do something like bar result equals await timer confirmation dialog dot confirmation result. Okay, and now we no longer need this inefficient loop. So we can hit uh, play. Well, let's set a couple breakpoints. So we'll have one there, one here, and we'll hit play. Okay, so we see we hit that waiting the confirmation result. Okay, so I'll hit play again. And now we're waiting for one of these two actions to occur. If I hit cancel, well, we get result is false. So this uh, timer will not be created and we won't get three seconds elapsed. And if we reset that scene, uh, I'll hit OK this time. We get the OK result. I'll hit play. And in the output, we should see three seconds elapsed occur uh, just a couple seconds later. Okay, so uh, that is pretty much a walkthrough of the await uh, keyword inside of Godot showing an example of how you can use it with a function call that has its own nested await, but also how you can create your own signals to handle multiple input types like OK and cancel at the same time and eventually getting the result you're looking for so that you can continue on with your function calls. And once again, await is asynchronous. So when you use the await keyword properly, um, all of your other code in your game is still going to be running. It's just going to have this little piece of code wait for the condition to be met before it continues on. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I'm going to be putting uh, basically the project here, the tiny project, as a free link in the description. Uh, thanks for watching to the end, and I will see you guys in my future video content.